the car was driving down the road with the back on the ground with no suspension and rattling this woman's teeth out and the car didn't want to tell us why it was doing that. Hello, this is Nico at Charlie's Foreign Car and today we have an X5 in, an F15 X5. And the customer complaint is uh, the car rides rough. Also, the car was a little low in the back. That was her complaint. We hooked it up to ISTA, we ran some diagnostic codes, and we got no codes out of the EHC, the electronic uh, height control. We started running through the test procedures. We're in uh, service functions uh, under chassis and suspension, and there's four EHC tests. We can go run the compressor, and on ours, here's the old compressor. We already replaced it. This compressor turned on, it ran great, it sounded good. It tells you all the usual stuff. Is the engine off? You have a battery charger hooked up? Yeah, we got 14.6. We're good there. So now, does the compressor run? I can hear it in the background. It's underneath the passenger seat, uh, outside the car on the bottom. That service function's finished. Did the compressor turn on? Yes. Uh, you notice it doesn't have, there's no pressure reading like line pressure or bag pressure on this car when that just happened. So it didn't give us any sort of pressure reading. I tried monitoring pressure off of the feed line uh, over here. So if we kind of, if we watch what we're happening, we, we got the, looks like a starter motor, right? And then it's got some sort of gear assembly into a compressor. And then this goes into the block on the other side. I put the Pico on here and all I got was, on this compressor, I got 18 PSI as a maximum reading. Um, it's not a good test because I did that with also the brand new compressor. I got 22 PSI, and I know the system operates way higher than that. Then we could go to filling and draining on the, of the EHC. And what that does is it gives you a couple options. You could fill the bellows or vent them. So we chose first to fill them. And in the beginning, we filled them and what happened was uh, we sprayed down the rear springs and the rear springs were leaking. And so we put new rear springs in it. After we put new rear springs in it, the car still wouldn't come up off the ground. For filling procedure, it must not be parked on the floor. It wants the rear wheels to hang. Okay, ignition's on, yeah, 14.6, we're good there. So I'm gonna fill the bags and let's wait 40 seconds. The bags are now filling. Okay, so that procedure is now finished. The car is still up in the air, and this is how we're gonna check it. We're gonna go over and take the car down. And then let's watch what happens with the car when we bring it down onto the ground. Okay, all the weight is being supported. That, the rear of this car is at full plus ride height right now. The bags are completely filled up. Uh, the, the rear is much higher than the front. It looks like an old drag racer car right now. We are going to go back into filling and draining. That procedure finished. Now we're going to vent the air bellows. Now it says the vehicle is on a hoist. The vehicle's not raised, right? So it's on the ground and the hoist is ready to catch the car. Yep, on a battery charger, all that. Next. Right now, it's venting. So this, the car should be falling right now. And the vehicle hoist is going to catch the car. And slowly, slowly, slowly. The car's falling. The car has no codes in it. The car came in completely on the ground and we've activated the compressor. We can hear the compressor running, but it can't lift the car. We filled the rear and then we ventilated the rear and that's what needs to happen. It needs to be able to you know, completely fill up and then completely deflate. Okay, so let's recap here with our no codes diagnostic. When requesting the bags to fill, one, you need to hear the pump turn on this will check our EHC functionality. Number two, checking the valve block. Remove the air line at the air spring and perform fill procedure. This will check for airflow from the compressor through the valve to the spring. The air line is easiest accessed at the spring instead of the valve. While checking the valve block, 
Did you hear airflow out of the airline at the air spring? If yes, the valve works. Three, with airline connected now to the spring, perform fill procedure again. Did the vehicle raise? If the vehicle didn't raise, the compressor is not building enough pressure and it needs a new compressor. Four, perform fill procedure again, then spray springs with soap solution to check for leaking. If they are leaking, replace the springs. Ride height sensors, we could check ride height sensors here. It's gonna display ride height. Yeah, it's parked flat, firm ground, next. Now let's go to the top and do an overview of the air suspension system on this car. We're underneath the F-15 right now and we're just going to do a brief summary of the air suspension system. This car has a pretty simple system. Rear air springs only. Uh, here's where the compressor is mounted, right here. Uh, here's the motor. It's nice and warm after we've been testing it. Uh, the compressor is on the back side over there. Uh, here is the distribution block. So here's the feed line comes from over there wraps around here through right to here into the block. The block has two air lines coming out of it, uh, blue and red, correlating to left and right. Uh, it goes down the car. There's no reservoir or tank uh, except for what's in the air springs themselves. And that's it. So we've got air springs, two lines, a block, and a compressor. That's pretty much it on this car. Let's take this compressor apart now and see what happened inside here. Wow. Check that guy out. Is that a piston? That's the piston. Oh, so this is the reservoir. So it's just a crankshaft and a piston. Did the ring seize? It's not looking like you stick right here this side. It's like oblong or something. Weird. It's it's like a white it's like a wiper seal. Is there like a ribbon on the bottom of that guy? What's what's that? It's like know, it's like the seal. Wavelength. Yeah. See how it doesn't it doesn't move. It should have some elasticity to it. But... We're gonna take this apart too. Okay, the spring popped that guy out. It's like a dryer. This assembly, uh, from what we're gathering here, uh, this here's a connecting rod uh, right down here. And here's a piston. And here's a, a seal. And the seal this is kind of dead. Um, that's what I'm thinking happened, because this thing was still spinning. That motor, the motor was still spinning this guy and uh, it just stopped making pressure between the cylinder bore and in here. So here's the inside. Here's our crank. Here's our crank case, connecting rod bearing, crank shaft. Go ahead and pull that guy off of there. It's like a one inch stroke or so. All right, so we got this air suspension system completely taken apart on the bench here. We have the motor assembly. Um, we know the motor assembly worked because when we commanded the motor on, we could hear this thing turning and the bags would start to fill. They just wouldn't have enough pressure in them, but they would just start to fill to the point where we could soapy water test the air spring. Here's the piston, uh, the connecting rod, it goes right in here. Here is the cylinder bore that the piston sits into. So it just goes like that. 
This gets connected then to a dryer. So here's all the desiccant that I pulled out of it. So it just all this stuff was in there, right? So all the desiccant was in there. Um, here is the vent valve, goes right here. And that's what vents the air out. And then this is the block. Uh, here's our charge port. And then here's our left and right out uh, to each air spring. There's no pressure sensor. There's also not a PID uh, in ISTA for pressure. So this whole entire car is, is relying on just the two rear uh, ride height sensors. There's a left and a right. And if the car is too low, it tells the block to open, add more air. If the car doesn't go high enough, it just keeps trying to add air. And the whole point of this is that there's no code stored in this car, uh, even though the entire rear of the car was completely sagged all the way down, riding on zero suspension. What ended up fixing this car uh, was a set of air springs and the, the compressor motor assembly, which the motor assembly comes with all this stuff. It all comes as one piece, one part number, right? It's inconclusive as to what exactly was the failure point. Um, is this piston ring, did it fail, not causing enough pressure in between uh, this and the uh, bore of the cylinder? Uh, did a piece of desiccant fly in here somewhere and get caught in a valve? Not that I could really see. Uh, could that have happened? Yeah, that could have also happened. A new compressor is what was able to get enough pressure in the system to rise the car. So to summarize this whole car, what we did is we replaced the air springs because they were leaking. We soaked them down after we filled the old ones and they were just leaking like crazy. Uh, so the car got two new rear air springs. After that, it, it, this compressor was just worn out from filling these air springs so much that it, did, it could not pump the new air springs up. So it got a new compressor. After that, now the car is Ride, li ride height is good, ride level is good. Uh, now we're just gonna go test drive it and the car's good to go back to the test.